Hello, Skin, everyone, and welcome to At Home with the Gamecocks, presented by Ford. We visit with a two-time all-conference performer and still a record holder, your name quite prominent, Miss Erica Mason, in the Jacksonville State record book. She was a cross-country runner and ran the distance events, both indoor and outdoor track and field for Jacksonville State. Erica Stam, when you were here, now Erica Mason. So great to see you. Uh, first of all, I know you've been at the front lines of, of COVID-19 in the midst of all this. You and Michael and the family, everybody okay? Everybody good at this time? Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on here. Um, everyone's doing fine. There, for a while, I was working directly with um, a COVID-designated unit, probably for four to six weeks um, while everything was still um, shut down. And so that was a little scary, you know, living and breathing in it every day. Um, and now I'm, I'm over in outpatient surgery, getting patients caught up on their, their surgeries they missed. So. Did you, well, you said it was, uh, well, let me put it this way, I guess. Were you anxious? Would that be the best way to put it in working there? Um, I wasn't anxious about working there. Um, what made it difficult was like one day you would have a patient and you would see them progress and, and get better. Um, and then you come back and you'd have that same patient and you would have thought like, oh, they might get to go home today. And then it's like they just went down again. And, um, and then you're transferring them to ICU. And, and so that was hard to constantly mm -hmm. see um, those people just really struggling to breathe or, or whatever their, their problem was. So. Were you working 14, 16, 18 hour days, anything like that? It would turn into like 14 hours, like by the time you got there and like give a report and you go home. Um, so it makes it a long day with um, the gowning <laughs> and the wearing the mask. That's the worst part. Wow. Honestly, the mask is a killer for me. It has affected um, my training recently. So, yeah. All right. Let's talk about Jacksonville State for a moment. Okay. Uh, so very successful career here, as I mentioned, two-time all-conference. Uh, and uh, you still hold the record, I think, in both the 5,000 and 10,000 uh, yes, in the distance runs so. and track. And uh, a record holder, I think, in cross-country. So were you coming in uh, – um, Where? How should, let's see. Let me try this again. Were you coming in – were you confident in your abilities or did you grow and get better and better in your time at Jacksonville State? So I would say I grew a lot and I have Steve Ray to thank for that. Um, when I came in, I was not your typical runner. I still am not. Um, I was, I would consider myself overweight for a runner. Um, you know, I enjoyed running, but like, did I really push myself like nutritional aspects or, um, you know, outside of just running, did I push myself? Um, I would say I've grown a lot on those parts. Um, so yeah, by my junior and senior year, I would say I've, I've pieced those things together a little bit more. And you actually missed, didn't you, your senior season? Is that right? In cross yeah, country? technically, I guess what I would consider my senior season is like your senior season times two, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> You did get to run cross, but you did participate that spring then in, in the uh, track events, didn't you? Co correct, yeah, okay. yeah. Which did you enjoy more, cross country or the, the track events in the 5,000? Oh, that's 10, so hard to answer. Um, they're so different. Um, hmm. Do you get, consider yourself more of a cross country runner or distance events? Oh, <laughs> I would say distance events just because I loved being able to run the 10K. That was that was like my heart and soul in, in college. And and honestly, I wish I could go back and, and race it again because I think I could improve on my time now. Um, <laughs> I was like, I think I could probably be under like 34 minutes now, like if I really tried for it. So I, I think I could improve. But um, cross country is fun. You know, it's 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 not the same circle 25 times and, and you know, you have mud and dirt and it's, it's fun. So. so you graduated from Jacksonville state and also you graduated in running. Now you're a marathon runner, I guess. And, yeah. and just earlier this year, uh, an Olympic trial in Atlanta, um, 
I know you weren't happy with the way it went, oh. but uh, was that an experience? And is that something you want to try and do again? Yes. So it did not go at all how I had envisioned, which um, you learn a lot about marathon training. Um, <laughs> if you have a plan, most of the time it doesn't work out like that. Um, like I tried to qualify for the Olympic trials like um, three different times. And the third time I got it. And the first time I knew I had it in the bag and then I get strep throat. So, you know, what, what you think is going to happen, it normally doesn't. Um, so, um, yeah, I want to try again um, for the 2024, but I, I would like to take a break. Um, I'm going to run one more marathon um, this fall if it gets to go off, at, you know, with everything that's going on. Um, and then I'd like a break, maybe not running a marathon until next fall or maybe the spring of 2022. Um, and I'd like to try for the standard for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, I think the standard will be a lot more competitive since there was such a movement in women's distance running with the marathon. There was a lot of qualifiers. Um, so yeah, I think the experience was wonderful. It was awesome to be able to put on a uniform that had red, white, and blue and, and get to maybe have my Olympic experience with um, trying to compete for the United States of America. All right. You mentioned Coach Ray earlier. He has retired. Uh, when you came, you were in Atlanta for that uh, trial run, Olympic marathon qualifier. So you got to come by, got to come to campus. You actually got to see him before uh, retirement. So was it nice to see him and if, just some thoughts on coach Ray and, and how he helped you in your career? Yes. So, oh man, I consider him like a second dad. He, he's like a tough lover. Um, he, he's hard on you, but then is there for you. If you, you know, are struggling, like nursing school was really hard for me. So, um, he would, you know, lift you up and, and say the right words when, when you needed to hear them. Um, but I have a lot of respect for him because, you know, he pulls, um, I don't know, this toughness out of you that you didn't think you had inside of you. Um, and it maybe threatened you a little bit and you had to learn and adapt, and adapt to those coaching skills, um, which, which I appreciate. And um, that's part of why I have a coach now to help me with the marathon because I needed someone to hold me accountable and, um, and push me, uh, you know, harder. We'll jump on something here before we wrap this up that you mentioned. Um, nursing school, very difficult as a student athlete and to be in nursing school. Uh, how did you have time to study or, or maybe I should say, when did you sleep in the midst of all this? Yeah, so I'm not a um, good all-nighter. I, I worked nights for a while, actually, surprisingly, but I, I could not do that now. Um, and in school, I could maybe make it to like 11 o'clock studying, I, but... I would, I would do better waking up at like four o'clock in the morning to continue studying before a test. Um, and it was hard for me to learn um, by teaching myself because you're missing so much class. So. All right, last thing, and this may be the, the, the worst one of the day. Uh, the guy is somewhere <laughs> lurking in the background there, your husband, Michael Mason, <laughs> baseball player at Jackson State. Do y'all argue about who had the best career at a Jackson State? Oh. <laughs> I win. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, it's funny because I, it's, I like that you brought that up. We talk all of the time about how competitive we are. Um, I think we've got it to where we don't talk about each other being competitive with each other, but we definitely, man, we t tag team on other people. Like we play cornhole with them. Like we're, we are the team to beat. Um, <laughs> No, but he, he had an awesome career, and they're so different, so it's hard to compare, like, who is better. Tell him, if he's close by, tell him to stick his head in here before we wrap this oh, up. Oh, okay. <laughs> or is he going, he, he's never been he, shy. Why would he be shy now? I know. I was like, they should interview both of us, like, two for one deal. Um, <laughs> hold on one second. Oh, right, it's okay. <laughs> I thought he was. Hey, man. Good to hey, see you. Are you? It was great to see y'all back in February, and I hope you'll come back and see us. Don't be strangers, okay? Oh, yes. We actually had plans to come like April 3rd and 4th oh, wow. um, to see the one of the last track meets. And um, yeah, COVID ruined that. Yeah. Um, but 
we we didn't get the chance to run the Ladaika when we got to go visit the last time. We were so sad about that. We missed the Ladaika. We don't have the Ladaika here. Um, <laughs> but we were so blessed to be able to um, see the new stadium. Yeah. That was so cool. And you guys gave us a personal tour. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see y'all again. Come back. Don't be strangers. Uh, thanks for the memories you created for me and for all of us. And. Oh. Best of luck in, in your endeavors and trying to make that uh, Olympic team in 2024. Oh, thank you so much. You take care. You too, Erica. Thanks. At Home with the Gamecocks, presented by Ford.